Here I did some experiment to visualize Newton Schultz iterations with our core of new muon optimizer that's the best optimizer that makes neural networks learn uh, two times faster or almost two times faster. So understanding this will help you understand how the new muon optimizer uh, works. So it's an iterative method to orthogonalize matrix. You see we have five steps and what does that all mean? So you see how we have matrix M and matrix M, matrix multiply, it's transpose, M times M transpose, and you see it's converging towards identity matrix, where diagonal is one and other values are close to zero. So this is how Newton Schultz, that is muon, transforms the matrix so that uh, if you multiply by its transpose, it becomes this identity matrix. This is to help neural networks learn faster. So it's adjusting the weight update matrix that's gonna get subtracted from the weights to change weights when muon optimizer is learning how to change weights based on data and training. So orthogonal matrix is defined as if you multiply it with its transpose, it gives uh, identity. So that's what, that's how it becomes more orthogonal. So for this, we need to understand singular values. Think of singular values of a matrix as a measure of how much matrix stretches or squishes things. So if you have a vector, you multiply it with a matrix, it can stretch the vector, it can squish, it can rotate, it can reflect to the other side. So singular value measures how much it stretches or squishes this vector. So let's say you have a unit circle and then you multiply it with a matrix, it's gonna stretch that unit circle into ellipse. And so singular value will tell you how much it got stretched. For example, if this one now became two, so singular value here is two. So if we multiply a circle with two by two matrix, this matrix will have two singular values, this stretch and this stretch. So if it stretches, for example, like into ellipse. The two singular values are the lengths of the two main axes of this new ellipse. This idea generalizes to higher dimensions. The number of singular values equals the number of rows or columns of the matrix, its rank. In our example, we want to track singular values of each of these five steps of the, of the matrices. So this first matrix, in the beginning, you see the blue line because it, it's four by four matrix, so it has four singular values. So it shows how much it stretches each dimension. Uh, for example, 0 0.8 for this first singular value, 0 0.6 or 0 0.5 for the second, third, fourth. But with our Newton-Schultz, we want to make singular values close to one. So we want, don't want uh, the those matrices those update matrices that we are adjusting, we don't want them to actually stretch or squish uh, when multiplying with them. So we want their singular values to be around one, which means they're not gonna stretch or squish the circle or vectors, they're just gonna rotate them. That's the core secret of Mion Optimizer. It just rotates vectors as opposed to stretching or squishing. And we'll learn more about that in this video and next videos as to why, but let's now learn, uh, keep learning about this. As I said, every matrix can stretch or rotate, but we want our matrices just to rotate. We don't want them to stretch. That's why we want singular values close to one. And we don't need it perfectly at one. This is good enough. Neural networks can tolerate a bit of imprecision. In the next iteration, orange one, uh, it goes up here. This one is very low, so, but we get closer to the red line. Then green one, even closer, especially this last value here is very close now to the red line. This is fixed. Uh, it's, it is a bit oscillating, going left, right, everywhere. But in the end, the brown one seems to be closest. Although on this graph, maybe red one seems closest. Maybe this Newton-Schultz iteration method is not perfect. Maybe uh, this red one was actually closer. But on average, the last one should be closest. If you do this for many, many matrices. In our experiments, we see all four singular values moving towards one, which is a telltale sign of successful orthogonalization. Interestingly enough, I'm just telling Gemini to do these experiments for me. It's smart enough to teach me uh, to generate some experiments. There is probably similar stuff on internet and it knows. 
So I just want to understand it, all of this. The way mu1 works is they multiply the matrix a few times with uh, in this formula. So they use these uh, indices. This reminds me of polynomial approximation of this function that orthogonalizes. So the orthogonalization function for the matrix. It reminds me of a polynomial because we have this variable a and then we have a squared a and then just x without a. So this is coefficient that multiplies the square, the first power, and uh, you see this b multiplied by x, a bit confusing for me as well, but this looks like polynomial approximation. Let's do some ablations or experiments with these coefficients. Maybe we can find better coefficients. We can see the formula here again. So a is x at x transposed. So we, this is that polynomial approximation, and then we, we multiply maybe to decide how to change this x, and this is to decide how much of the old x to keep. So this is old x to keep and how to change it as well. And so this polynomial would approximate how to orthogonalize x. But we don't want to apply it fully to x, we just want to part it, uh, apply also like the other part of keeping the x. I will end this video here, but check out all of these ideas for my videos that I have. I'm just gonna scroll a little bit so you can drop a subscribe, drop a like, drop a comment, and uh, check out other videos here on my channel, and uh, see you next time.